So, hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking time out on a Wednesday evening. And I, I, I'm assuming, as as game developers, you don't have weekends anymore. But still, thank you for taking your midweek evening out. Um, you know, Suhail and me have been uh, connected with sport in different capacities for for ages, right? Suhail, in fact, was also a professional cricketer. Um, and so our connect to sport has always been significant, very deep and very passionate. Um, I think that that is what that's what helped us and inspired us to kind of go out there and create a content platform and call Kabaddi Adda. And, you know, I, I'm starting with this because I can imagine most people thinking, what is a content platform doing on a game developer conference, right? And um, thankfully to COVID, we actually got a lot of time to introspect as an organization what else would fans want and kabaddi is, is is probably the market leader in 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 the kabaddi content we aggregate create disseminate and distribute kabaddi content for the fan across the country um and i don't know how many of you know it's the second most popular league in the country for example the pro kabaddi league and the popularity of the sport is massive what is interesting is it's a very vernacular audience that follows this sport. So, all of these things is what, you know, God has started to saying, uh, you know, where is gaming as a sector for the Kabaddi fan, right? Uh, wh- what games exist? What, what does a Kabaddi fan do? Uh, he watches the sport once for a couple of months, three months in the year, and then there is absolutely no connect for the fan to the sport for the rest of the nine months, right? And so... As we as we realize, so Kabaddi Adda as a distribution platform has deep reach across our YouTube channel, our Instagram account, our website, and a few other uh, distribution platforms, including WhatsApp, actually. Right? And what, what we realize is the fan interest is actually a continuous process. It's not spiky. However, there is no continuous solution. Right? And as COVID happened, we started discovering what, where is the Indian audience. So a lot of our thinking as game developers is, is is much more recent than a lot of you So we came into game development and into offering games to fans purely from the perspective of saying the sport fan in India is an evolved sport fan in cricket. Right? He understands the sport in depth. He has a strong point of view. And the cricket games are mostly global in nature. Right? Creating a localized flavor to that is critical. And that's where that's how we kind of started thinking thinking about gaming. Then we also realized the cricket space is wide and niche is valuable. It Kabaddi Adda, as you would imagine, is a niche product. And the reach we have is I think purely because of the fact that we have chosen to stay niche and very focused. So the um, the YouTube channel has over three as close to three hundred thousand subscribers in, in over a year, just over a year, year and a half. Right? And and uh, and similar. So, as we as we kind of kept digging deep into this po- process, right? Um, Suhail brought in a lot of point of view from being on television, and he will talk about that specifically, right? As a what what, what is he seeing the fan ask for? So that influenced a lot of our decision making. So today we wanted to actually focus this conversation on three things. The first area we wanted to sp- focus upon is why. Uh, why gaming makes a lot of sense for a media content part- platform and and what sort of investment and focus is needed to build something that is meaningful for that space, right? That's kind of first topic. The second topic is more, you know, this is a need of the art for the fan and and this industry we believe is at the cusp of, of uh, fairly exponential growth but niche again being a key requirement. And the third point is our experiences in game development, because we are a much more uh, recent entity, we have had to be agile. We've had to put out our first version of a of a full product in two months. So our learning from that phase, and maybe, you know, if there is interest, we go into the third section in detail, right? So it depends on um, how you guys want us to drive this conversation. So we are, the way we are thinking of this is to keep it as free-flowing as possible. So feel free to ask questions through the conversation. When one of us is talking, the other one will always be looking at any open questions. And so we'll actively respond. Um, and, you know, we, we are happy to pause at, at different points on this conversation to take to, to mold the conversation in the direction that 
uh, that thought that you guys are interested in uh, look hearing it. So, so just to jump in now, as as Arvind had talked about, I think uh, the one big aspect that we want to talk about is the fans' experience, right? I think every fan today, whether it's cricket, whether it's kabaddi, whether it's football, whether it's basketball. Wants an immersive experience. I think we all talk about the immersive fan experience, uh, and with cricket, it goes a little bit deeper, right? Every second person in our country of 1.2 billion people is an armchair expert. So, how do you detail and how do you go into that immersive experience with someone who's already invested in the sport? So that's why, for us, uh, as Arvind said earlier, COVID sort of came as uh, a blessing in disguise. We had to develop a product in COVID times because, as we were a content and distribution platform as Kabaddi Adda. we realized that with no kabaddi happening through covid we had to rediscover ourselves and change our ways and alignment as well so that's where super creek emerged from uh, what super creek evolved to becoming is sort of an amalgamation of what our core team is now arvind uh, has a, a big background in in startups and a former mckinsey man and you know has that business sort of background to himself i've got a sports background with a marketing side to myself and we've got two other co-founders who are in machine learning ai and data as well so we sort of understood that our strengths are different and we sort of brought together all those four strengths and put them together to piece super creek together uh, what super creek essentially does is cater to that armchair expert it makes you understand uh, how an ms dhoni could think what you could do different to rohit sharma in the 19th over what bowler you could pick differently um, obviously you wouldn't want to do too much different with rohit sharma given the success of the mumbai indians but what could virat kohli have done differently to get past a certain side in the eliminator for instance what could uh Kane Williamson have done had he batted at number 3 instead of at number 4 now these are deeper questions that a lot of fans across the country across the globe want to answer but more than anything else there's a lot of fans that are playing your dream 11s your my team 11s your my team circles as well that want to understand it better to evolve more to win more and so we come in as this perfect data gathering source that has taken real data from across tournaments over the last decade put it together and actually created our own simulator in house uh, at kabaddi adda uh, and in our company to actually give users and give fans the ability to facilitate results in real time in the way that they would expect it to turn out and i think that's for us where this really turned into something quite cool uh, and we started to see uh, a bit more uh, you know accuracy with our simulator more and more as we developed it a bit further and i think what what excited us was that this is just the start of something that goes beyond cricket right Uh, as arvin touched on earlier the kabaddi season the pro kabaddi season goes on for just 3 months of the year but all these players who are playing pro kabaddi are active for the other 9 months of the year fans are still wondering what's going on with the sport of kabaddi so even if there's not a live match going what's stopping them from playing a game of kabaddi online right and i think that's where for us we realize that our learning has to be deeper to an extent that we activate the fan even when live sport is not on especially in covid times i think it's become a reality we've got to understand now that it could happen any time in the future it may not be um, you know just this passage of time where we have it uh, and i think that's where for us we realized that gamification is very very necessary what complemented i think our gamification was the fact that we have a strong distribution network as arvin said uh, through kabaddi adda we've got 300000 subscribers on youtube we've got large traffic that comes through our website through our instagram pages and so that traffic has allowed us to actually activate a large user base to start gamifying themselves to start playing more online and as they play more online as they get a sample of what they want it then moves into the second stage of them being more invested and that's where i guess the monetary benefit comes in as well so uh, for us our learnings as arvin said was also pretty quick uh, we've had to develop evolve and keep trying to sort of um change the product a bit more um as it's gone along there's a question that's just come in saying hey sir you don't consider super crick as a fantasy platform uh, no we don't actually because what we do is actually facilitate fantasy platforms what we do is give you the ability to create um results out of real match situations what we're doing is taking real data and you're able to play super quick whether there's a live match going or not and as you keep understanding perhaps when you when you get to super quick i don't know how many of you have, have actually got to it but if you get to um if you get to the the site and you understand the flow of it you pick your own 11 you then choose your bowler for each phase of the match or perhaps if you're playing the the extended version you actually pick every over so every decision you make has an outcome and so you start to understand based on where you're playing who the teams are what changes you might want who you might want in your side 
and then that facilitates you to pick certain players in your fantasy teams on Dream Eleven or my team circle or my team Eleven as well that earn you more money. So for us, we work together with fantasy platforms in that sense, and I think that's why for us a collaboration uh, that's due uh, soon is going to be important. Uh, but I think that's where we're slightly different to a fantasy platform where we enable players to play super quick all year round, whether there's a live game on or not. Uh, and I think it'll change with every sport as well. We're talking about just cricket here, but remember in kabaddi there's only seven players. There's only certain outcomes that can change as a result, and so it becomes even more layered. It becomes even more interesting. So I think the one key element that I have to draw on is the immersive nature of the fans, right? Uh, Arvind talked about how uh, kabaddi is the second most watched sport in the country. Now, just to put numbers into perspective, uh, the IPL uh, before this season, this season has broken records in terms of viewership as well. But before this season. We had about 730, 800 million viewers uh, per season of the IPL. Kabaddi is the second best and has 435, 450 million viewers on television, and that tells you there's a massive market. Uh, and therefore, tapping into one fourth of that market, one tenth of that market, even gives you a sizable uh, audience, a target audience that you can tap into. So, I think for us, that's where we understood that it wasn't just about content creation, content distribution, but also understanding how we could. Gamify a sport like kabaddi. How we can now take kabaddi and make it like cricket has been over the years, become an armchair expert sport. Have people understand the data side of kabaddi. What a certain player does outside of pro kabaddi. We all know now what Virat Kohli or um, Cheteshwar Pujara or Ajinkya Rahane does in the Sahid Mushtaq Ali Trophy or the Ranji Trophy, for instance. So for us, that's what we want to make sure that now we start to understand what a kabaddi player who's not playing pro kabaddi. Is doing for Air India, is doing for the services, is doing for Indian Railways, because that then has an e- example of what they could do in pro kabaddi. It has implications on their franchises, how much they will spend on them. It has implications on the federations. It has implications on sponsorship and brands that want to align with these personalities as well. So for us, it, it has this 360 degree approach of understanding and evolving a sport from the ground up, and then turning that into a bit more as well. Arvind, do you want to take? Uh, there's a question that's come in from Nikhil yeah. on what Supercricket's USP is as a cricket simulator. I wanted to actually kind of uh, respond uh, to his earlier question also. Uh, you know, uh, which is what other sport do we have in mind? I think you you already touched on it fairly. We we obviously are saying uh, we are heavily betting on the fact that you know Kabaddi is 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 has got a very niche audience. It's got an audience that is vernacular in nature. Um, so your game thinking has to be vernacular. And by niche, by niche, we're still talking about millions. Just yeah, uh, I think by niche, I meant it is. It's it's an India-only audience, right? Yeah. You're not even solving for a market outside India, which is probably a massive market. But you can you can you can you can in your game thinking, in your game design, in your product development cycle, you can always focus your thinking and think this is my audience. You can you can name your audience quite well, right? So that is that is that is that is integral to our thinking on what the kabaddi fan wants. We think the kabaddi fan uh, is right and is present will will consume con- will consume a, a, a game related to a sport very heavily and very quickly, right? So we believe that that investment to build it is is a key one. And I think that you know that that there has been a question I want to put out and be interesting to hear points of view uh, is. How do you, as a, as a game developer, where do you, th- where do you, uh, think your move should be? Do you, do you put a product out there when once you understand the market or once you know the audience exists, or do you take a leap of faith and put a product out there based on macroeconomic conditions? Right? So, for example, I would, I would think today with the availability and easy access to data and access to devices that are easier to play on, and with, with you know, with presence of income you know the the sport fa- gaming fan is definitely growing right the gaming audience is growing now how do we take that audience and uh, test new products with them and at which point as a developer are you willing to put a product out into market versus versus step back right um, i i'm just leaving this out there as a question for so people uh, i would love to hear thoughts and then we can chat about it a little more um, and coming back to you nikhil Uh, so obviously, uh, kabaddi is massive. Um, we are looking, thinking of a few other sports, but we we feel like the kabaddi audience is a very specific audience. They would love their content in their vernacular, right? So that's going to be the big focus immediately. Now, 
super cricket usp right as a, as a cricket simulator uh, is focused on a few things like suhail so said one of the big things is having a simulation algorithm which lets us uh, which lets us come up with relevant choices it's not a roll of a die right when when virat kohli faces a bowler of a much lower elo he is very likely to to perform uh, well much more often so if you run that simulator 100 times eight out of uh, 85 out of the 100 times uh, a batsman of the caliber of virat kohli with his quality of elo score is likely to score at a certain strike rate and score a certain volume right at the same time having seen the past data if virat kohli were to come up against a spinner such as shreyas gopal who has got him in the past because we have the data that's accumulated over seasons and seasons of the ipl it will also tell you the way that it will change the probability of virat kohli scoring runs it will also change the way that over will be as expensive as it could be versus him getting his wicket versus him scoring 10 runs as as to four runs of shreyas gopal to keep his wicket intact all this is built into the simulation sort of what makes it even more exciting for us to build and and yes ipl was was interesting for us uh, we in fact managed to put our product out just uh, as ipl launched so that was that was a there was a key goal for us so as ipl got announced we pushed ourselves very quickly to put the whole product out there to put at least a basic poc of the product and uh, and test user engagement so you're right i mean i think this is this is obviously been a period where you are uh, you're actively looking right um the audience also exists the the time also exists so it it's about being at that space at the right time so um, yeah anything else other we can we can just move on right a little, little bit because I, i'm a little worried that we are running out of time but let's uh, let's i think uh, just moving on anyway till while uh, more questions come in uh, i think the the experience for me that i draw on as a commentator with star sports with someone who's been involved uh with the IPL now for four seasons with the ISL uh in since 2014 since uh 2014 of pro kabaddi and and having started and seen the growth of each of these leagues and sports perhaps grow from ground up is that we're seeing a very different uh understanding of each sport we're seeing a very different layering of each sport and even the way we therefore as as content distributors or content creators create content or create games for our audiences has to change uh audiences are now are smarter audiences now want a bit more depth they want a bit more uh, experiential gaming right and i think that's why every decision that is made in a game has to have a cause and effect every um, decision that you're making a gamer take to actually take them to the next page of your game has to have something that is uh, a requirement of their smarts a requirement of their engagement and i think uh, that's why user engagement and user experiences are going to be the key driving forward as well um and i think when when you're looking at sport in in specific because that's sort of for us where our expertise lie uh, we just see this as a very exciting space because sport isn't going to run 24/7 i think it's one of the realizations of covid times the new normal is that we don't have 24/7 of sport so when sport isn't on how do you satisfy the craving for sport that is growing with every day we saw the numbers for for the ipl this time around uh, be absolutely massive but why is that because there was an absence of the sport and maybe that's actually the solution take something away and bring it back in a big way because then it satisfies an even bigger hunger for people to want it more uh, and i think that's perhaps going to be the case with kabaddi as well i come back to kabaddi and kabaddi adda because that's sort of our our, our baby our, our brain child and and that's sort of what keeps everything else uh, serviced and for us kabaddi adda therefore for us is an exciting one because we're on the cusp of gamification there we're on the cusp of more tournaments being created we're on the cusp of of seeing even greater distribution of very good content that's suddenly coming out in the vernacular side of things in in languages such as tamil and hindi and uh, also marathi and and haryanvi so you know these are languages that each person wants the personal touch to uh, I, you know i've seen it having been with star sports the the star sports tamil wing or the kannada wing or the malayalam wing has a separate niche audience which is in the millions right and i think we have to service our games and our gamification also i think in that in that way and in that vein towards targeted languages as well uh, as we go forward because uh, as we've said more and more the sports fan is evolving the sports fan is only getting deeper in their understanding and the sports fan therefore wants more from every game that we uh, are offering them so it can't just be 
uh, sitting on our haunches and being happy with what is on offer. Uh, just a quick question. Karthik says, what's the big next big event we're looking at? Well, the calendar is fluid at the moment. India, Australia is up next, obviously. Uh, and then there's India, England, uh, and there's a bit of cricket in between with England, South Africa and, and things like that. But the IPL, the next IPL is around the corner. It's March, April. Uh, and then we would think that Kabaddi will be around the corner after that as well. And that's going to be a large affair. Three months of Kabaddi, two months of the IPL. Uh, there could be an international Kabaddi event we're hearing as well uh, in between. So uh, there's a lot of sport lined up. Obviously, uh, where it's being played and how it's being played and how it's being offered is going to be uh, tested through COVID times. But uh, yeah, those are sort of the next big events that we're looking at. Also, right, uh, I think just to uh, respond to Karthik, uh, one of our uh, big agenda or push is that, you know, the, the sport fan exists and the need of the sports fan for a game that is connected to the sport very closely, either as a manager, as a player, as a skilled player, all exists, right? I think the, and we, we believe we need to find ways to test quickly what is it that the audience for that sport would value and put out products. So we are actually bringing uh, typical product development mentality here as opposed to saying we put out a highly finished product. We try and put out a product that, that proves the existence of an audience. And then we evolve the product once we, once we see an audience. That, that gives you the opportunity to iterate fast you know, grow fast and probably fail fast if needed, right? Um, and also, I think what it does is that it allows for us then to collaborate with others who have another product that is that would have an extension of this added on, right? If you had a uh, a website of of a say a, a big a large newspaper, say the Hindustan Times or the Times of India, uh, for instance, that wants to engage their audiences that are coming to their newspaper every day, that are coming to their online magazine, that are coming to their GQ website, perhaps, right? You want to tailor make something that's different, that's unique, but you're already driving large audiences who want something fresh. What we're trying to say is, as you said, the question was, what's the next big event? What we're saying is, why do you need a big event? Why can't we engage a sports audience 365 days of the year, 24-7, without the need for an event? And for us, that's where sort of Super Creek came in. That's where I think even uh, what we're working on with the Kabaddi side of it will come in as well, where we're servicing an audience who, whenever they want the appetite for a game, it's there. Rather than just relying on fantasy gaming, which is just during a live event, what if there's no live event on and you still want the game, you still want that immersive experience of uh, engagement through a sport? We're trying to bring that to you as well. Correct. Um, so, I mean, I think we are, we are running out of time. So, I will actually try and uh, summarize a little bit. And, uh, and if we don't have questions, uh, we should close, right? But uh, see... We we think content is 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 a is a starting point for the sports fan, right? Two, from there moving on, we think the evolved sports fan values niche product. It is worth experimenting and delivering, right? And moving from there, we also believe that the Indian fan would love to have vernacular engagement, right? And given the ability of devices today. Uh, the the willingness to put out products faster rather than higher quality is a core question we keep trying to answer. It's a debate. It's it's I think a debate that everybody in this forum keeps going through, and I think there's a there is no right answer. Right, all of us have answers that we are most comfortable working with, or 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 situations in which we need to deliver our situation. And what is our business model? How do we evolve from there? Has always been our thinking. So so a lot of those three things are how we move our. Uh, conversation forward, right? And uh, I think we think as uh, as a as a game developing community or people who have just started to build games for this, we think we are in this journey where you know there's a cusp of big user consumption, and and there are there are a lot of opportunities to crack this sport open, right? To crack this journey open. If if we if we start innovating on business models, and that is where we have been trying to you know, actively make this journey of saying, how do we partner with multiple people uh, earlier? How do we help take more things to the market? So that is kind of our direction of thinking and our uh, our pro our process as an organization. So, so yes, uh, that, that that's how we think about it. And this is, you know, our little journey in a nutshell. So uh, happy to kind of take any questions. And Karthik, yes, there are a lot. I mean, as with any product, there's a set of feature pipeline that we're thinking about. 
but i think the biggest question we still need to answer is um you know which what what have we learned from the audience engagement we have had over the last uh, month and a half and what what do we think the audience now needs right how do we take this how do we evolve the product and which direction do we take now so yeah, just- just to summarize uh, from my end as well to add on to what arvin said i think the the key for me as to what he said there also uh, and something that i believe from my career as a sports broadcaster too is that content is king right if you have good content it will distribute itself but if you have good content people will come back uh, and for us we we've, we've understood that a lot uh, through kabaddi adda and we've understood that if you have good content it also it means you can have an evolved fan base uh, you see it with dream 11 dream 11 why do they have fan code a dedicated place where people learn more understand more through expertise whether it's me giving them a, a team for their site whether it's uh, you know akash chopra doing a, a a team for the day or someone else handing a team for the day it's a platform of content which then serves the game itself and for us we see that as kabaddi adda does future as well where it's a platform that gives you not only great content great distribution methods as well but also then when the game is ready and when gamification is ready for that sport it serves the gamification and the gamified experts that are coming through as well who want a bit more bang for their buck who want more understanding more layers to each sport and i think that's why collaborations as i've been said is is a win win uh, you've got to understand what people need how you can work in their environment and there's space for everyone in a country of 1.2 billion i think there's space for everyone if you can keep innovating so hopefully as i've been said earlier we can crack this journey wide open we can uh, continue this journey and keep evolving and learning as we go as well so thank you yeah uh, hi guys uh, so we are uh, just 5 minutes away from ending the session if you guys have any more questions you can please ask suhel and uh, arvin um, also you can connect uh, both of them uh, after the talk as well um probably they they would be here in the launches or anything like in the vip section as well uh so before ending uh guys both of you you do want to add a uh, few last words before we end the session no i think we we're, we're good Weber. i think we've covered everything that we we'd like to cover i think it's uh great to have uh you know arvin along uh, with me on this journey it's been it's been fun to have him Uh, and the expertise that we share and co-share as well but also lovely to have us here thank you so much for having us uh, on this platform it's been uh, enjoyable it's been nice to engage and listen to so many other fantastic developers and gamers and uh, people who have who are within this field as well in the content side of things too thank you thank you uh, thank you arvin and thank you soel for being a part of igdc uh, we really appreciate your time all right guys thank you um, yeah let's uh, let's end this session thank you thank you thank you, thank you.